Okay, welcome back. I hope you had some fun because in this video, I'm going to teach you some more tricks that we are going to use throughout the rest of this course when we program our own games. So the first thing that I want us to do is to move these code blocks a little away from our main focus area. So I'm going to pull in this big forever loop slightly away from the wind flag clicked and the hello my name piece of code also a little bit away. By now, I'm sure you know what this when flag clicked block does. When the green flag is clicked, this little starter block will trigger the execution of whatever code we place beneath it. Now, the first thing that I want to show you in this video is that you can put in multiple when flag clicked blocks in the same code dashboard. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to events here, this yellow section, and I'm going to pull in another when flag clicked block. In the first when flag clicked block, I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to put this little blue code block saying go to X and Y. I'm going to fill in zero and zero in the holes here x equals 0 and y equals 0 means the dead center of the screen and x and y are the coordinates of the sprite. We'll talk more about coordinates later on in this course, but they basically specify where on the stage the sprite is going to be. x equals 0 and y equals 0 means the center of the screen. Also, I'm going to pull in this other blue code block point in direction 90. 90 means 90 degrees, which means the direction right. We'll talk about direction and degrees again later on in the course. So don't worry about it. These two blue blocks basically reset the sprite to the dead center of the screen pointing right. So I'm going to click on the screen flag to prove it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to control, the orange section, and I'm going to pull in two forever blocks right below the first when flag clicked and the other below when the second when flag clicked. So we have two forever loops. Now inside the first forever loop, I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to pull in the move 10 steps and I'm going to put in 30 inside. So much like we did in the last video, and in the other forever loop, I'm going to pull in the turn 15 degrees to the right. So notice that I've split this move 30 steps and turn 15 degrees to the right in between two forever loops. Now, my question to you is, what do you think is going to happen if I click the green flag now? Let's test. So notice that the cat spins around in circles, and that is because both of these scripts react to the same event the clicking of the green flag. So when we click the green flag, both the first script and the second script execute independently. So this is the first lesson that I want you to take away from this video. If you have two scripts that are starting with the same thing, they will be executed independently. All right, let me show you a different thing. I'm going to drag this second when flag click block into the code blocks section, which makes it disappear. And I'm going to drag the first forever loop as well. And I'm going to go to control the orange section, and I'm going to add create clone of myself, and I'm going to pull it right below the blue code blocks. So let's see what this does. I'm going to click on the flag now, and you probably didn't see anything because there is just one cat, or so it would seem, because if I drag the sprite off the stage, we'll see another cat being drawn beneath it. This is called a clone. Clones can also be programmed, and we can do that by dragging this when I start as a clone starter block onto our code environment. So when I start as a clone, and we can put in some code blocks beneath it. Let's go to motion and let's add this move 10 steps right below when I start as a clone. So when the flag is clicked, 
the original cat sprite will go to the center of the screen and will point right and it will create a clone of itself. The clone will run the second script starting with when I start as a clone. So let's click on the flag and see what happens. Click. So as you see, the original cat moved to the center of the screen and a clone got created beneath it which moved 10 steps to the right. If you want the clone to be drawn on top of the original sprite, you can go to looks, you can scroll down and bring in the go to front layer right below the move 10 steps of the script starting with when I start as a clone. And if you click on the flag, you see that the clone is now drawn on top of the original sprite. And of course, if you want, clones can create other clones by themselves. So let me show you. Let's assume that if a clone is not too far to the right, let's say right where my mouse cursor is, which is at position 100 or something like that. If the clone is to the left of that, then it will create yet another clone. Let me show you. So I'm going to go to control, the orange section. I'm going to pull in the if block. So not the if else, but just the if block. I'm going to snap it right below. Under the condition, I'm going to go to operators, the green section, and I'm going to take this less than diamond shape. I'm going to snap it inside. In the first hole of the diamond shape, I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to drag this rounded shape X position so if the X position of the clone, that is the horizontal distance between itself and the center of the screen is less than, and let's put a number, say a hundred. So if the X position of the clone is less than a hundred, then let's make the clone wait for a second and create yet another clone of itself. So I'm going to go to control the orange section and I'm going to pull in wait one seconds and then scroll down and I'm going to add a clone of myself. So the clone script goes like this. When the clone starts, it moves 10 steps to the right. It goes to the front layer, means it's drawn on top of the other sprites. And if its position is less than 100, that means if it's not too far right, then it waits for a second and it will create a clone of itself. The other clone will run the same script again. It will move 10 steps. It will go to the front layer. If its position is less than 100, then it will wait for a second and create clone of itself. Then all the clones will be drawn 10 steps further from one another until one of them is too far to the right, which means that this if block will not get executed because its X position will be greater than 100. That means it's too far to the right. So that's in theory, at least. Let's click on the green flag and test. So flag, and we have every second, a new clone being created 10 steps further from the old clone until hopefully at the end, the last clone is too far to the right and the script will stop, which seems to be the case. Now, if you want to make this a little faster because one second is downright boring, you can fill in instead of one second to say 0 0.1 seconds. Now, if you don't know decimals, 0 0.1 means one tenth of a second. So 10 times shorter waiting time, which means 10 times as fast. So if I click on the flag again, we'll see this very nice translating shadowing effect for the cat. This is pretty cool. Now you can do all sorts of stuff with these clones. Let me show you. If I go to looks, the purple section and if I drag in the change size by 10 and put it below the other purple block the clone will move 10 steps will go to front means it will draw on top of everything else and it will change size by 10 that means it will grow and if the position is not too far to the right it will create another clone so let's test this if I hit the flag again notice what's happening the cat creates clones increasing in size, which creates this very nice effect that the cat moves towards you. This is so cool. I have another idea to create a little ghost effect by changing the transparency of these ghosts. Let me show you.
So I'm going to drag the if block away, put the change size by 10 away here, and get, get rid of it, snap the if block back, and I'm going to go to control, and I'm going to add a repeat 10 block, and I'm going to put it into the open space, and I'm going to go to the looks purple section, and I'm going to add this purple change color effect by 25, and I'm going to change color to say ghost. The ghost effect is simply the transparency effect on the sprite. A ghost effect of zero means a fully visible sprite, and a ghost effect of 100 means a fully invisible sprite, so a fully transparent sprite. So if I do repeat 10 and change the ghost effect by 10, 10 times 10 means 100. So progressively, over 10 repetitions, I'm going to make a sprite increasingly transparent. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this when I start as a clone script a little below and put this repeat 10 block to the original sprite when flag clicked. So after the original sprite creates a clone of itself, it will increasingly turn transparent. Okay, and then I'm going to right click on this repeat 10 block and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to add it at the end of the clone script. So when a clone starts, it will move 10 steps, it will go to the front, that means it will be drawn on top of the other sprites. If it's not too far to the right, then after 0.1 seconds, it will create a clone of itself. And then over 10 repetitions, it will become increasingly transparent until it's become fully invisible. So the clone will also become increasingly invisible. Let's click on the green flag and see the end effect of that. So, flag. Wow. Let's click on the flag a bunch of times to see this effect. See how the clones become increasingly transparent and the new clone is always visible? Wow, this is awesome. So you can now program these sprites to create these really cool effects on the screen. I'm really proud of you. In just half an hour, you already learned a lot. So I'll leave this project to you to play around with these sprites and create your own effects if you want. And I will be waiting for you in the next video.